Hey guys, what's going on? Jimmy Ali, and welcome to Serverus Blade, a game I found perusing Steam's new releases, because it's something I do. I just go through it every day just to see if there's anything to make a video on or speedrun. This game turned out to be both. We're going to take a little adventure to do this short free-to-play game, which was a thesis project by the University of Southern California and Team Blade with the assistance. Right out the gate, you'll see the key presses are processed and loading screen, so that's why our camera is instantly fucked. Hood and UI instantly comes off with a Souls-like vibe. You can see where the inspirations are. Movement is fine. Everything looks good and dandy. Straight over to the item, which you do have to stand on top of and wait and press B or you'll fuck it up. Straight into some more tips and tutorials popping up on screen into our taste of combat. Combat is smooth, buttery, and nice, and has a Sekiro mechanic where it lets you just stab your sword straight through them when you break their part. And all you have to do is hit them so many times and you'll break their posture. It's really nice, really good, really smooth. And not long after that, you find your first altar. Very, very Dark Souls like so far. And with that, we just move further on in through the cavern, straight out into the main city. But before we get through to the main city, we pick up an item. These items are found throughout the game. And what they are, they are upgrades to your character. They have this, like, deer form. And it just, like, is just, like, a Super Saiyan version of yourself. When you press it, you go berserk and just start attacking things. I'll show it off later in the video and talk about it. But that's what the uh, item I picked up is. From here, after you exit the cavern, you can see the city in its entirety. And man, it's a nice looking desert town with a deer worshipping cult overtaking it. I do like the aesthetic and the vibe they went with it is pretty cool and unique. I do like it myself. I also get to test out what the deer mode is like and you get to see it in its full extent of just getting people getting whacked on by multiple villages. I run around and collect all my items, grab the heart, grab the other upgrade to my deer mode and make my way to the next altar. From here we find out something very quickly that the mode is absolutely busted and they give you a lot of healing hearts from just randomly exploring the world so I have five hearts and deer mode is active and I get to gun down and mow down all the people in front of me. People with shields are no longer a problem, casters go down with a quick stint. Enemies, just any basic enemy, no matter it be shield, spear, magic, they don't stand a chance while you're in deer mode. Deer mode is generally a overpowered bit of equipment that you have at your disposal and with that being said we quickly kill all those enemies, go down to the bottom and grab my item which has two enemies blocking it but they just get ignored after I kill the first one and I just pick up the item and make a break for it because I'm not fighting the guy with the shield he's just annoying really. Yonder up this way will supply you with your first like challenging fight through the whole game like an actual challenging fight you have to actually learn to dodge and attack on times instead of just swinging your weapon wildly even when in deer mode because he doesn't stagger like the other enemies do so with this you gotta defeat him well you don't have to you can just activate the altar behind him and leave but i chose to fight him because i consider him a mini boss in some sense and just a typical Ashley Souls fashion, I get one hit away from killing him and die, only to do him the next time round. So, that's fun. I don't like the way this is becoming the norm of a situation, but it is. He has some cool attacks, he has a little dash, he has a little continuously spinning attack and stuff. He's a pretty decent boss, but overall, he's like a, a, a normal enemy on crack, more than a boss. So, a mini boss. <laughs> and after you beat him, you can take down the altar which takes you to your actual altar and a way to progress further into the game. Back out the way we came to go onto the roof of this building only to just for some odd reason instead of grabbing the item just glitch through the roof and go to the altar underneath us. Don't know how that happened that was weird but we go back onto the roof grab our item which turns out to be another buff to our super secret deer mode of doom and destruction and we can move on to the big statue in the middle of this fucking place where on the way to the top I somehow break it again to teleport me to the fucking altar which this is confused me the most because I originally thought because I was above it it interpreted me trying to access the altar instead of the item but I'm nowhere near it this time so I have no clue what click like launches this glitch into existence but my ass just flew across the screen to that altar there was no chance I accidentally assumed I was at the altar and clicked it I have no clue what happened here go look into the eyes of the skull fall to the ground 
and get ready to do the next part of the game. The chapel is the final area between you and the boss fight. Once my brain came to this conclusion, it stopped being a marathon and became a full-blown sprint. Grabbing the item onto the way into the chapel, missing the altar like a big buffoon, and going straight towards the altars that you use to dispel the barrier on the door. There's altar one, which I did it in reverse order because I'm blind. Altar one is the one you see as soon as you come up the stairs. Altar two is the one you use to like finish off the altars and then you drop down onto the two platforms leading you towards the boss. It may look out of order and choppy because I've got to put this in the right order seeming I did it in the complete wrong order, but I'll try my best. Now, I don't want to sound uh, dramatic here, but the way the game is built is to make this guy feel like the be-all and end-all of the situation. Whatever he delivers can make or break the game in a dramatic way, simply because the basic enemies don't need any skill to beat. You don't need any of these upgrades or rewards you're finding throughout the area to make it this far in the game. Like, everything you keep picking up, you just don't use on these normal enemies. You don't use some of the mechanics in the game on the normal enemies. So, it all seems like it's building to this one point, this one boss, where you finally get to use everything you've equipped and picked up and learnt along the way to beat him. And, by God, did they nail it, because this boss uses one of the best mechanics in the game and uses it tenfold. There's a mechanic where when you do a perfectly timed dodge, you can do a thrust attack. This has adds a lot to the stance break meter, as well as do a little bit of damage. Now, normal enemies don't normally do an attack that can like be perfectly dodged, and even when they do, it's not even that worth it that much. You normally kill them before they attack, so it's not worth it. But in this boss fight, you use it a lot, and this is why I wanted to speedrun it, and this is why I did speedrun it, because this boss fight is really fun and rewarding, which is a key word that like I don't get to throw around very often in Souls games nowadays, is rewarding. You definitely do feel rewarded for putting the time and the effort to learn his attacks to perfectly dodge them to do thrust attacks back into him so that you can break his stance quicker. It's fun. It's rewarding. It's nice. Like, it's a nice break of pace from what I've normally been playing. The fact that these guys in a university made a better boss fight than the, some of the games that I've paid to play is insane to me. The fact that it felt smoother than some of the games I've paid to play is insane to me. These guys, is it the best boss fight ever? No. Is it gonna, like, win awards? No. Is it, like, the pinnacle of Souls-like gaming? No. There's still problems and they're ever-present. But Jesus Christ, this fight is so fucking fun. It's insane. And it's just rewarding. It's nice. It's smooth. It's buttery. I love it. The guys, like, the little <laughs> villages that come out to help you fucking thrust attack them and push them back. His second phase where he goes Super Saiyan, I'm about to beat your ass mode. It takes a while to beat him. He's not a simple run through guy. I just love every single second of this fight. They did an amazing job of making it feel like everything I was acquiring throughout the game was for this guy and this guy alone. The level structure all makes sense once you fight him. It's just amazing. I loved every second of it. Jesus Christ, well done guys at the <laughs> the southern california university and team blade because you did an amazing job with this final guy like i said it's not going to win any awards it's definitely not the best fight i fought but jesus christ it is nowhere near the worst fight i fought this was amazing i loved it and with credits rolled that's service blade what do i think of it i think it's a really fun little game to play for 30 minutes it, it, it's free it can't hurt you it does better than some of the games you gotta pay for like it's actually pretty fucking good all things considered but where would i put it on the tier list is the big question so where am i gonna put this where am i gonna put service blade well i think personally and with the amount of praise you might think it goes in an a but it goes in the b tier I did say high things about it, the combat's nice, the controls are nice, the camera's nice, the environment's nice, the final boss fight is brilliant, so why does it get a B over an A? It's short, and I get it's free to play, and it's just a project, but it is short. As well as being short, there's just no replayability there, except from fighting the final boss. I'm never going to go back to fight the normal enemies, loot the items that I never went back and got in the first place. I'm never going to want to explore the areas again. There's just not enough replayability there, except from the final boss, which is why I've took to speedrunning it to find some replayability. If I wasn't speedrunning it, I'd never touch the game again. So that's why it's going... 
the uh, the biggest tank hit is however is the optimization this thing runs absolutely terribly for no reason at all uh, the biggest complaint I have is if you put everything on low, it seems to work perfectly fine. But if you are go any higher than that, the game tanks in FPS, becomes laggy, becomes crashy, becomes unstable, doesn't run well. And it's not good looking enough to warrant having those kind of problems. It's just not optimized very well. As well as it really heats up my computer for no reason to fucking all at that point. But... Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a B. I would even argue I'd put it ahead of Remnant, to be honest. Like, I would put it there. It is definitely the higher end of B at the moment. I would definitely put Remnant below it. So, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I would definitely recommend going to download this game. Link will be in the description down below. As well as, I can finally plug other socials. My Twitter, my TikTok, and my Twitch, which I've been streaming every other day. So, that means today I will be streaming. Uh, we'll all be in the link down below in the description. The TikTok is God knows what's going to be posted there, but it's got stuff on it already if you want to check that out. But that's what I will be doing now at the end of every video. I can I can plug my socials, which is something I've never been able to do, which is very nice. Uh, next video will probably be a Wayfinder video because that comes out in like a day or two. So until then, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.